Hello everyone, welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we are going to be covering leak code number nine, palindrome number. This is considered an easy problem, and we'll just start by reading through the problem description and looking at the examples, and then we'll get into doing the coding. For the problem description says, determine whether an integer is a palindrome. An integer is a palindrome when it reads the same backward and forward. So this is a little bit of a weird problem because with numbers, there's not exactly a solid sense of what it means to be backwards. That's more of something that you would think about in terms of like words and strings, like 117 backwards, what does that mean? There is no function backwards on a number. It's 711 backwards of that. I don't really know, but that's what this problem is calling for us to do. So it's giving some examples here. If the input is 121, you're supposed to output true because if you reversed the order of these numbers, that would be a palindrome. Um, and I guess if it's negative 121 here, that is actually false because there's this negative sign out in front. So I suppose if you reversed that, it would actually be different because of the negative. So that's kind of something we're going to have to think about. And then if the input is 10, it seems that would be false because, of course, 0, 1 is not the same as 1, 0. And it looks like there's a follow-up here. Could you solve it without converting the integer to a string? Well, the fact that it even says that suggests that converting the integer to a string is probably going to be the easiest or best way to solve this. So I think we'll start by doing that. We'll do a string conversion solution because that should be pretty easy. And then we'll also try a solution that doesn't use string conversion. So we'll have to figure out how to go about essentially constructing the reversed version of an integer, but using math, which would probably mean using modulus and divisions. So let's jump into the coding editor here. You can see we are handed just an integer, an integer x that we're supposed to check. And then the output is a Boolean, which is true or false, whether it is a palindrome or not. So I don't think we really need to do too much planning to do the easy version. All we have to do is convert to a string and check if that is equal to the reversed version of the string. So that is actually very straightforward to do. So if we just do return um, the string version of x equals the reversed string version of x. And to reverse a string, you could use like the reversed function, but you can also use this shorthand kind of indexing trick in Python to reverse things. So this should take the string version of x, reverse it, and then compare it to the non-reverse version. And the result of this then is either true or false. And that should give us the correct answer for this problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit on that one. And we'll pull over and check the solution. So it seems that that did successfully pass as a submission. Um, it was faster than about 90% of other Python solutions and didn't use up much memory, it seems. So that did work. And now we'll try to do the more challenging solution where we don't get to convert to a string. So we'll remove that here. And if we're not able to convert to a string, we probably need to think about um, inputs that might trip us up. For instance, when we convert to a string, the negative sign becomes a hyphen or just a minus that we can reverse and check. But a minus sign in an actual integer, like that's something that's going to be weird to deal with. I'm not exactly sure how we'd do that. So the easiest way to probably avoid that problem is just to say if the number is negative to immediately return false because there can't be a minus sign on the right side of a number. So we'll just say if x is less than zero, which means it's negative, we'll return false right away. That needs to be capitalized. So that should take care of that. 
And now we have to figure out how we're going to go about reversing the number. So essentially what we're gonna try to do is construct the entire reversed version of the number. And then at the end, we'll just compare that to the actual number. So I guess we can write that now. What we want to return is X, which is the original number, equal to some reversed version of the number. So like, we'll have to store this variable, but we'll call it like reversed number. So that's what we need to return. So I suppose we need to initialize the reverse number to something, set that to zero to start with. And now we essentially need to find a way of looping through every digit and then using those digits to build up the reversed version of the number. So this is gonna re require a loop of some kind. Um, and actually, since it's a number, we don't know what the number of digits or length of it is. You can't check length of an integer. So since we don't know how many loops we're gonna have to do, that's something we'd have to use a while loop for and not a for loop. For loops are for when you're looping over something of known length. So if we're gonna do a while loop, we'll need some sort of iteration accumulator probably. So let's define a new variable, digit, start at zero, um, and then we're going to need a while loop. While something is true, we want to strip off a digit and essentially add it to our reverse number. We want this while loop to continue running as long as we still have digits left to check. We're gonna start by stripping off the first digit, then the second digit, then the third digit, etc. But eventually we're gonna to get to a digit place that is bigger than the entire number. And once that happens, we can stop. So to do that, we're going to have to use this digit counter. We're gonna to have to iterate it too, so let's do that. Um, Every, every loop, we're gonna iterate it by one. So what we have to do here is figure out a way to loop a number of times equal to the number of digits in X. And one way that we can do this is by using floor division that increases with each loop according to this digit that we're storing here. So for instance, if we take our number x and floor divide it by one, we're just going to get the entire number. So if the number is 121, like the example, and we floor divide by one, we get the whole number. But if we then floor divide by 10, we get all the digits up to the tens place, but the final digit, the ones place, is then stripped out. If we did floor division by 100, we would get the whole number except for the first two digits, etc. So with 121, if we did floor division by 1000, well, 1000 has more digits than 121 does, so the result of that would actually be zero. And at that point, we know that we've already seen all of the digits so we could exit the loop. So essentially we need uh, to, v to divide by a number that's growing by a factor of 10 with every iteration or every loop. So we can do that by doing floor divide by 10, but we're gonna raise it to the power of digit. So that will just cause this to grow in that fashion from one to 10 to 100, etc., growing by a factor of 10 with every loop. And then we want to check when this gets bigger than the actual number. And when that happens, it is equal to zero. So we're just gonna say, well, it's not equal to zero, we're going to continue this loop and once it grows bigger than the number and we know at that point that we've seen all the digits and now the only thing left we need to do is on every loop we need to grow our rev num here by stripping off the next digit and essentially adding it to this and to do that i guess we're going to store a new rev num and it's going to be equal to the old one right but we need, to, we need to take the current one that we have and shift it all essentially one digit. We have to 
make room for the next one we stripped off, which is going to be in the new ones place. So to shift the current number up to the next place, we essentially just need to multiply it by 10. That will make the ones place into a zero. So we'll take the current number and multiply it by 10. And then we just need to add on what the next digit is going to be. And we want to strip off again the digits we haven't seen. So we can reuse this little bit of code here that we used to do that in the while loop check. We want to strip off everything other than digits we've already gone through. But we don't want to look at everything we haven't seen yet. We only want the final digit of this. So that final digit would be in the ones place. So to strip off the ones place, we can use a modulo 10 to do that. So let's just surround that in some parentheses so that we make sure everything is carried out in the right order. Oh, it looks like we forgot to put the equals zero here. Whoops. So let's submit it and check the solution here. Submission. 104 milliseconds this time. The good news is it did pass successfully. Um, it wasn't particularly fast, probably because the string submission was a lot faster than this um, purely numeric submission. But for this sort of challenge, the important thing is just being able to think through the logic and getting a solution that actually works. So keep coding, and I'll see you again next time.